We're continuing our Lightroom Classic workshop for beginners. This episode is still exploring more of the basic panel. Hi, I'm Terry Vanner, I'm a professional photographer, and I'm teaching you Lightroom Classic 2025 from the ground up. This is episode five, and we're working through the basic panel for processing your images inside of Lightroom Classic. So let's get into it. Back where we left off, we have an image up here. We've done a little bit of work on it. But inside of this basic panel, we have tons of things we can do. We explored a little bit with color and balancing color. Now what we're going to do is work on exposure. So let's take a look at what we have here on this particular image. If we take this slider on the exposure and bring it to the left, it's going to darken it. Bring it to the right, it's going to lighten it. So we can see how that is handy in taking image to try to fix it. We have contrast. We can increase contrast in the image or we can decrease contrast in the image. So that's what that slider does. You can see that there's parameters that I just put in, but maybe I wanted to get it back to basic. Now I don't want to hit reset and go all the way back, but if I double click the word, it'll take us back to where we started. So now this next slider is highlights. So what highlights does is it increases just the highlights of the image and or decreases the highlights of the image. So it's a really great way if you've got, let's say, a, a white feathered bird to bring the, the tones of those highlights down on that bird. Shadows does just the opposite, right? It will lighten the shadows or darken the shadows depending on what you have. Whites does kind of the same thing as highlights. It handles just the whites in the in the image and it, it works a little bit more extreme. So take a look here. We'll just zero this one out. We'll go to highlights and we'll slide this all the way up and you can see how much brighter part of the bird got. But if we go to whites, let's go ahead and get this back to zero. If we go to whites and bring this up. You can see it is much more dramatic. So these two, the blacks and obviously the black does the opposite, right? So what I do on those two is I always treat those really lightly, right? I don't, I don't move those sliders very dramatically at all, but the shadows and highlights I do quite a bit. So let's take a look here. Let me give me a, let me give you an example here. We have three images here. This is actually an HDR. And when you take an HDR image, a lot of times you're going to be molding three different exposures and we can see the exposures right here. We learned this last time is up here. We can see this was shot at two seconds. This one was shot at a half a second and this one was shot at eight seconds. So you can see the different exposures you have here, but let's say this is what you shot, right? This is how you shot it. You only got one and you're like, wow, is there any way to recover that? Well, let's take a look and see what Lightroom can do. We can take our exposure and start moving that exposure up to get more detail, right? We can take these shadows areas and slide that up and start to get more detail in the shadow areas. And if we've gone too far on the highlights, we can drag the highlights back and create an image that's pretty decent, right? So if we want to do the before and after, that's where we started. And this is where we brought it in. And we just are dealing with just these top sliders here. So this is a way that you can maybe recover images as you're working, right? This might be something that you'll find is, is pretty useful. So this is an HDR image that was shot that way. So three images shot on a tripod. So they're all aligned. And the way that we do this, we click on all three, we right click and we go up to photo merge, photo merge HDR. So let's click on that. And so Lightroom Classic is gonna take these images and build the best possible image it can from all of that in terms of exposure. So you have auto align clicked. I always leave that clicked. Uh, we have auto settings. I just leave it alone. I just go just out of the manufacturer habit. Deghost amount, deghost amount is has to do with with when the images are aligned, you want to make sure that they're going to be cleanly aligned. It's not, uh, you don't want any ghosting. And I just leave this alone. I don't create a stack, but you can create a stack and that will just make it a little more convenient to all those images will remain in a stack along with the, the final image. 
So then you just hit merge, right? This is actually pretty simple, right? You just, all the work is done in the shooting of it. It's not done so much in processing. But what Lightroom Classic does, it takes those images and builds us a new image. And we'll see here, if we look, if we come back here, we see this is an NEF. So we're looking down here at the info, NEF, NEF. And then we look at this one, look, it's a DNG. So that's a digital negative. That's a raw file that's produced by Adobe. So now we still have a raw file and you can see the sliders have been manipulated, but we can manipulate them even further if we wanted to. So those sliders are all still available. We still, still have all the same controls as you would on one large raw file. But what it's done is merge all these exposures together to give you this one. And it's a really cool way. I use HDR all the time especially if you're outside under harsh lighting and you have a big variance between the lights and the darks, this is a great way that you can actually create images real quickly and simply. And Lightroom Classic does most all the heavy lifting on this. So this is how these panels work. And every image that you work on, you'll have the ability to work on different parts of the, of the image based on the tones, right? So if we wanna bring the highlights up, Look what it's going to do. It's going to brighten this tone across here, but it's not going to do much to the bird itself. So if we come up here, we'll zoom in on this. We'll zoom in on the bird and we can lift the shadows and try to lift those shadows a little bit. And, and this is how you can go through and work on your images to get them to look the way that you want, right? So the next section down is texture, clarity, and dehaze. And this has to do with how your image is going to be perceived in terms of its its uh, texture. So if we move this texture slider up, you can see how much grittier that looks. A lot of noise comes out. It's grittier, but yet it seems like there's more detail in the bird. So let's go ahead and balance that back out. Let's go to clarity and slide this up. And again, it's kind of a little bit more of a contrast inside here. So it's it's creating more contrast not really super desirable, a little bit of a crunchy look, uh, but you know, done in slight variances, that's actually a pretty good way to go, right? You have your texture that you can bring up a little bit to get a little more texture in feathers or fur. Clarity, you can bring up a little bit, but you never really do it too extreme. And dehaze is also a section where you can work with contrast. So if we slide it all the way up, you can see it's much more dramatic in our, in our dehaze right but this is actually really good for for cleaning up a, a waterfall or something where you've got fog or you've got something that's in between the lens and your image dehaze is a fantastic tool and i encourage you to use it but these are the three things that you're going to able to look at in terms of working with your texture and your clarity on a particular image now the next section down is Vibrance, which is a color, watch, so watch what happens. See how we've really extremely increased the blues and the and a little bit of the warms, but not, not as much. You can take it down a little bit. And saturation, same deal. Saturation is, the way that I look at both of these tools is vibrance handles cool colors. Saturation handles warm colors. So as you look at this, that's just an easy way to remember of what it is you're trying to do, right? If you're trying to uh, bring a little more saturation into a shot uh, that's going to have primarily warm colors, then use saturation. But if you're trying to get a more saturated look and it's cool colors, then use the vibrant slider. So if we come back to our original here and we want to have do a little bit of increased saturation. Well, the, the way we would probably handle this image is we would increase the contrast a little bit and then maybe lift the shadows a little bit. When I say lift the shadows is I'm bringing the shadows up just a little bit. You can see I'm not making a lot of extreme movements here. These are pretty mild adjustments, right? And then vibrance, you know, I'm going to handle the greens, right? If I do this, it looks pretty fake, right? Zero that out. But at Vibrance, we can start to bring up some of the cool colors just a little bit. 
where it looks realistic. So let me show you what that looks like. It's before and after. You can see the colors and tones look a little bit better on there. Now, if I just wanted to increase the beak, for instance, we could do a little bit of saturation on that, but we are going to pick up all of these tones in the, in the limbs that are red, that have reds and warms in them, as well as under his neck here. So those are things that maybe we don't want to do. And when you're working on this kind of stuff, it's always good to pull into 100% so you can see what it is that you're working on. And if that's too close, you can always come up here and say, okay, let's look at 50%. And that's another way that you can really zoom in on what, what it is you're doing. So you can kind of toggle between fit and 50% as a pretty easy way to close up and, and really see the details of the image that you're working on. Now, if you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon to be reminded of my next video that's released. I also read and respond to all the comments. So feel free to leave a suggestion, feedback, any kind of comment. And I actually read every single one of them and they sometimes inspire future videos. So keep those ideas coming. If you'd like to get a hold of me, you can always hit do it directly through Terry at imagelight.com and you can send an email to me. I'll respond back and I'll put you on my mailing list and remind you of my videos that way. All right. I appreciate it. So here's an image here of this plover on the sand and maybe we want to make this a little warmer. So we're going to come in here and we're going to add a little magenta, add a little bit of yellow and warm this up a little bit. Now, is that natural? Probably not. We want natural. We'll take our eyedropper tool and go on to something we know to be gray, white, or black. And in this case, the only thing we see here is white. So let's go ahead and click on that. That brings us back to a little more natural color, but I think it doesn't look that great, right? So I think that we could probably increase this warmth a little bit. So start bringing the yellow up just a little, and then maybe bring up a little bit of the magenta to give it a little bit of warmth. Then I can come down here to my vibrance and saturation. And again, I, there's not many cool colors in here, so I'm not going to work with vibrance, but in saturation, we can slide this up and start getting a little more saturated look. We can take our dehaze and create a little more contrast with the image. And now let's take a look before and after. And by the way, for me to do before and after a real simple thing is just to use this backslash key on my keyboard. And I can look and see what I had done. So that's how you can do this, right? I mean, obviously, we'd probably do a little crop on this, you know, depending on what it is we want to show. And we might say this is distracting. So we're going to go over here to our remove, which we learned last time. We'll drag this over. We'll just say we want to remove that. See how Lightroom does. It's going to go up into the cloud again. You got to be hooked up to the internet. So it'll do this work and let's take a look. Now, if you've got, if you're showing lines here and you don't want to see the lines, you can always remove those. And the way to do that is to come over here to tool overlay and right there, it says always, or you can click select it or never or auto, whatever you want. So never means we don't have to see it. And that allows us to do that. All right, so that's our basic panel for, for beginning our basic panel connected with what we did last week. This is our all the things that we do on our basic panel. So there's one last thing that in the basic panel that it actually is a is a pretty good way to work. And let's go ahead and, and, and show you how this happens. Up here, we've got custom, right? So this was our color custom. Let's go as shot again. So it brings us back to the way it was when we shot it. Now, at the top here, we have auto, black and white, and HDR. The way auto works, if you click on auto, it's going to say, I'm going to automatically try to fix this image and make it good for you without having to do anything. And you might find that that works for you. Just clicking auto, it's kind of like, you know, automatic color balance, automatic toning. But you also have down here profiles. So you pull this down and you can see uh, Adobe Landscape, Portrait, Standard, Vivid. So depending on what you like, let's let's go to Vivid and see what it does. So it makes it a little more vivid in its look. And we 
we can go to landscape. It's not really a landscape image, but you can see the slight variations that it'll make, right? Now, this section over here are called adaptive presets. Watch when I click on this. When you click on this, you're going to have a lot of variety that you can work from. And right now, we are just seeing the triangle panels. But let's go ahead and click these. And you can see what we've got here is we've got these different presets, essentially, quick presets of being able to get your image to something that maybe you like, right? So this shows you visually what those uh, different, that's vivid, remember this was landscape. These are, this shows you exactly what it is that you're looking at. You also have other things here. We have Adobe Raw, and these are a whole set of different parameters. And these are basically starting points, a starting point to allow you to move forward with your editing, get something that you like initially. Maybe you're going to find that one of these presets is going to be something that you're going to always come back to. So it'll be something you'll remember. And you, you can see here, we've got lots of different presets that are available. And let's say they're black and white. You have different black and whites that maybe you like, right? Maybe this is the black and white that you're going to always use. And you have the ability with these is you can change it to grid mode, large mode, so it'll give you a larger preview, or you can do a list and it just gives you the name. The, I think that's kind of useless, the list. But the grid actually is probably the most useful here as you can kind of get a quick idea of how something looks and what it should look like. Let's close that and let's go back to auto or we're going to actually click this one and go back to Adobe color. Then we're back to where we were. So the other thing that you can do is create your own black and whites, right? So we saw that we had some adaptive presets here that we could work with or adaptive profiles is what they're called, or we can just click over into black and white and this turns it into a black and white. But if we go in here, we can see that we actually have a bunch of black and whites that we can look at. So let's go ahead and click on black and white. There's 17 that are loaded already, right? The ways that black and white are gonna be yielded are entirely up to you, however you want these to look. They're labeled as to, you know, just by number, uh, depending on the style of black and white that you like. I don't prefer to do that. I prefer when I'm working with black and white is to do it all manually. And so next time when we come back, I'm gonna show you how we actually build an image in black and white and how we actually use some of the tools inside of Lightroom Classic to make the black and white image exactly that we, the way we intend. All right, we'll see you next time.